Thank you for staying with us. The story of Chima Ukunado, an auto mechanic who was arrested for alleged car theft and was allegedly tortured to death by police caused a national outcry over unrestrained police brutality against suspects and innocent persons in Nigeria. An autopsy was conducted on his remains, but reports reaching out say that this result is fake and that River State Police Command has expressed shock and embarrassment on this. And joining me to discuss this still in the studio is legal practitioner Chima Naji. Thank you for staying with us, Chima. And joining us also on this talk is Raymond Nna Kanat Nebe, legal practitioner. Thank you, Raymond, for joining us. Thank you, Ben. Now, what is your reaction to this development? I mean, the Chima story, when it came out, and now what the police is saying about the autopsy that was carried out? Well, uh, when I read it, uh, it was very shocking. But you see, in this country, we are beginning to develop very thick skins. Except when the thing has befallen you so directly. Because uh, you, there's a psychological process called uh, intellectualization, in which uh, you, you try to protect your mental balance by pretending that things didn't uh, happen the way they, are, they were reported. Mm. But uh, knowing uh, exactly what uh, the family and the kind of uh, gory report, even the one that uh, was shown in the social media, yes. uh, I didn't understand why even especially a woman uh, a, a, a woman, uh, in our culture, we see women as uh, being seized of milk of kindness. Yeah, Even in the most uh, harrowing experience, they still display their emotional empathy. Yes. But for this one to take it upon herself, even if there is a family land issue between that gentleman and her family, or that uh, he had a relationship with her or jinxed her or whatever, that didn't uh, uh, justify the kind of thing they yes. said uh, he, he, she meted on him. So I think this is a national outrage. Uh, but uh, when you also juxtapose it with the, the kind of impunity with which people are killed, uh, killing is a word even children now understand. Killing, as if we are chicken. You, know, you don't, you don't uh, initially they say you don't, you don't quarrel with somebody that uh, you have not met or you never had an issue with. Yes. But these days they kidnap you just for being you, that you have seen on the road. Uh, they, somebody kills, either police uh, stabilize or targeted, or somebody paid or co to compromise, or the gunmen, either Boko or what they call the hedgemen. So it, life has become so cheap. And uh, many people's uh, responses to the difficult uh, uh, economic uh, experience they have is to displace their aggression on innocent people. So I think it is very shocking and uh, the police should not sweep this one under the, under the carpet. We spoke to the River State Police PR officer N Namdi Omoni about this issue. Let's listen to this. Unsigned is being investigated. The CP has given the marching order to the men of this year, led by the Deputy Commissioner of Police, okay. to investigate the circumstances that led to the death of Chima and to bring anybody found complicit to justice. So that process is on, as at um, last week, autopsy was conducted. So there will be police reports from the department that investigated the case. So that um, that would inform the CP the uh, briefing with the press. But the CP will at the end of the day address the press on on what happened in that uh, matter. Uh, from the brief that we got from uh, the commander, they were running um, across the uh, traffic, and then they were suspected, taken to the station, interrogated and detained. You know, sometime in the course of the investigation, the one of them, Chima, died in custody and the rest were charged to court, the four others were charged to court. So when the matter, when the family of Ede Chima were sufficiently aggrieved and they took to social media, it attracted our attention and we invited the commander, he was even invited to even Abuja, and then the CP, after the his, uh, interview with the CP, the CP directed the, the, the Commission of Police to take over the matter and investigate. So that's where we are. For now, the matter is being investigated. So we just feel that the public should be calm and wait for the outcome of this investigation. 
if if one man that that has zero tolerance for corruption has never shielded any of his officers, he, he has been put here last year July, and between that time and now, some officers have been dismissed, some are facing different uh, kinds of uh, punishments. So he's one man that is, um, is, is, is that is disciplined and applies discipline in all aspects of his uh, policing. So what we appeal again is that public should remain calm and wait for what will happen in this case. Now, the River State Police Command has expressed shock and embarrassment that the earlier report indicating that the disease died of high blood sugar pressure was based on fake autopsy report. What does it depict of our Nigerian police today? <clears throat> because the same autopsy report was mm. conducted by the police. Well, you see, thank God for social media, quite frankly, because um, a lot of things used to be swept under the carpet. Yes. In every organization, there are bad eggs. It's not the policy of the police as an institution to kill suspects. But you see, uh, in, in our climb, where sometimes control get loose or uh, some people have their own personal psychological issues, they take the laws into their hand because then perhaps the law is not heavily enforced against them. You know, police always will have one excuse or the other that uh, they thought that he was an armed robber who was escaping, then he shot the tire, but they didn't kill the man. There's nothing that come out of it, and so on and so forth. So it, it is very important, like the PRO said, uh, if it is true that the commissioner himself is somebody that is usually empathetic, he should take it up because we are sick and tired of uh, some of these brutalities. The other time, people were agitating against SARS. And uh, you cannot be pointing gun at those people who are paying you. It's these Nigerian citizens that are picking their bills. Right. Raymond, let me, yes. let me have a two cents on this, please. I mean, it's not the first time police brutality is not a new <coughs> phenomenon to us. And the case of um, Chima is just one too many. I'm quite unfortunate he's not here to tell his own side of the story. Yes. Now, what, what do you make of this? and the Nigerian police? Well, for me, I think uh, the, the case of Chima, like you rightly pointed out, is just an, uh, is a familiar story. We're talking about the latest victim, if, yes. you, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's an indictment of the internal processes of the Nigerian police. I heard the PRO say uh, they were invited, they were being investigated. In the course of investigation, one of them died. It raises the question, for, yeah. how, for, how, for how long were they being Detained. Detained and interrogated, and this so-called investigation conducted. The Constitution says you cannot detain somebody for more than 24 hours, right? Yes. And 48 hours maximum is the event whereby the police post is far from the place mm -hmm. where the person is being detained, right? Mm -hmm. So it raises the question, if, if this was a police that was uh, committed to enforcing the rule of law, they would have known that we cannot keep this man in our custody beyond 24 hours. Whatever the case may be, admit him to bail and then continue investigation. Yes. That's how the system works. So when you have individuals who come into the police and then um, uh, assume, uh, uh, turn around the whole the internal process of the organization and substitute it for their own personal whims and yes. emotions, that is, this is the kind of story uh, you get. So uh, the, we should, the question should be, not Chima, but the other Chimas still in detention as we speak in various police formations across this country. I believe there are persons who will see the potential victims in the mode of Chima. So rather than, rather than uh, saying that the government, the police is on it, the police should rather make sure that other Chimas around the country are being released forthwith and their, their investigation continue the way it, it should happen in Sena climbs. Yes. Now, now Raymond, this is a, the, the, the integrity of the Nigerian police as a stand has always been questioned when it comes to statements they put out when situations like this happen. happen. Yes. How do you see this panning out? Like Nandi has rightly said, this should not be swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. Suchima is one too mm -hmm. many. All the yeah. cases ongoing we don't really are not privy to. Mm -hmm. What should be done in this kind of situation? Well, uh, as per what should be done, I, I really don't see a magic wand because we, the Nigerian police force is a very, um, what's the word now, it's a very large one. And I don't know how the Police Service Commission and the IG of police, I don't know the amount of leverage they have in the management of men of the force, of men of the, of the police, right? So I think uh, the, to stop this, I think it's about the, the process by which we recruit 
people who become police officers. We have to look at the processes to make sure that we don't recruit, like Mr. Nnamdi pointed out earlier than before now, we have former criminals, people who are jobless, who are just recruited into the force. When people have a, a very, very faulty uh, psychological, uh, 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 a, it's a, a faulty psyche, when they are admitted into any organization, it is bound to manifest in very, very uh, ugly dimensions. So we should look at the process by which people will recruit these men of, of the police and then try to see how we can prune out the bad eggs uh, 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 over time. Right. Now, how, how can we begin to hold those accountable men to protect lives when they become the people who now take this life to men to protect? And we know on our streets, young men every day get harassed by police and they force you to accept the things you've not committed. And even sometimes, there have been cases, the police plant incriminating substances on you. How do we begin to clean the entire system, the Nigerian police force, as it stands at this point? Okay, Aizmi? Yes, okay. please. Very well. You see, the laws in the country are very, very clear. We have provisions. But the problem is, who is going to, to enforce? Especially when the enforcer is the one that is being accused of violating the law. Uh, it becomes very difficult to make a headway. You see, the, uh, the attorneys general of the various states should also up their game, because the crime uh, is something that is situated at the various states where the, uh, they happen. So the, the attorneys general of, this, uh, of the various states should have a very clear understanding with the police. Police will do the investigation. And uh, by the way they are able to, uh, even mandamus, you can bring mandamus for yes, something to yes, happen. Yes. But yes. I know that even if you bring mandamus, uh, something can still be hidden under. Yes. So it takes a situation where you, you get the IG of police. Because the IG is in Abuja. The first thing that happens in this country, when police is involved, they start by denying. Yes. And that's the general thing with public officers in this country. If you were going and say there's port road, they say hey, you are paid to say so. Yes. Meanwhile, you are, you are shock absorbers are in the mechanic. <laughs> you experienced it. You are never able to use your brain unless you are sponsored. So in this country, we need to become confident of ourselves to accept responsibilities and agree where we have shortcomings so that we can have room to make amends. So this idea of uh, being, um, you know, protective of your of your men, institution, yeah, and then so that when you do so, your institution will come clean that you are a good manager. It doesn't make sense. But we know the Nigerian police doesn't make is sense. so come so close to that because mm. police brutality doesn't many exist. Many institutions in, of government in Nigeria. are complicit yeah, now, in many aspects. Yeah. Raymond, you're a legal practitioner now. How can we ensure on, on this case of Chima that justice has got it for the diseased Chima and his family? What should be done? Well, um, um, I'm happy that these members of civil society are on the top of this one, yes. uh, uh, keeping tabs with the families of the disease and also the, uh, the Nigerian police force in River State. I'm also happy the governor of River State seems to be interested in this one too. Mm. So I believe uh, uh, all eyes will be, all hands will be on, on deck to make sure that at the end of the day, uh, the officers who are involved in these acts of uh, brutality are actually uh, made to face the full, uh, the full of the Especially law. the lady that took yes. it upon herself. She mm, should yes. be named and shamed. Yes. She yes. could be somebody's mother or somebody's yes. wife. Yes. Before she faces the general uh, uh, punishment, yes. she should be yes. psychologically wrecked yes. to send a strong signal. That yes. In fact, she should have been the one that would have been cautioning the yes. others, please slow down. Yes. After all, even if the guy committed mm. armed robbery yes. and they caught him in the act, if that shouldn't have been what the, the, the fate he should have met. Uh, Legal practitioners Raymond Nkanebe and Shima Naji, thank you very much for being part of the show this evening and for much. your contributions. Thank you, you very much. Sorry about the traffic. Yes, it's it's good you still made it with us this evening. Yes. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our reports now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take to stay with us.
The governor of Ekiti State, Kayode Fayemi, has sworn in Peju Baba Femi as the first female head of service in the 23-year-old state. Baba Femi also becomes the eighth head of service in the history of the state civil service since the creation of Ekiti State on the 1st of October, 1996. In her acceptance speech, the new head of service expressed her resolve to pursue a people-oriented civil service that will showcase the impressive intellectual capacity of the state. As a government, and this you know very well, we are committed to transparency in corporate governance and therefore will not tolerate any act that is in breach of the accord that we signed with the Ekiti people. Therefore, I implore you to see your appointment as a call to serve, a call to etch your name on the sands of time in Ekiti, and a call to be a part of positive history. And I urge you to do your best to justify the confidence reposed in you. On my part, I envision a civil service that is people oriented, with a culture of transparency and accountability, leveraging technology for social economic development of the United States. My priorities are staff welfare and training, leadership development and gender equality. In line with Camilla Mazi, if you don't train them, don't blame them. Therefore, I will chair more efforts towards the training and the training of staff. The decision of the five-member panel of the APS court led by Justice Mary O'Dilly that nullified the election of Mr. Lyon on the grounds that his deputy presented false information to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in aid of his qualification for the November 16 governorship election in the state is a welcome development. The Supreme Court has once again shown that illegality should not stand, and this judgment is in line with what our Electoral Act, which states that the person who had submitted to INEC an affidavit containing false information of a fundamental nature in aid of his qualification for the election should be petitioned. With the swearing in of the new governor and his deputy, we can only wish the people of Bayelsa all the good governance they deserve and need. Police brutality is one of several forms of police misconduct which involves undue violence by police members. And widespread police brutality exists in Nigeria. And the case of Chima is one too many. No matter our tears for Chima, no matter the well-crafted good for the moment sentimental promise of the river police commissioner to bring his killers to book and his good for the situation commitment to change the color of the eyes of the average police, nothing will change sooner or later. There is no doubt that the Nigerian police needs total overall and this can be grouped into three core areas, leadership, methodology, culture and attitude. If the Nigerian police must be responsive to modern public policy standards and demands, reforms in these three areas mentioned above is imperative and we say no to police brutality. That's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend.